In this next gen cam power mill highlights video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a couple of view utilities, uh, mainly focusing on the radius shading, the minimum radius shading, as well as the draft angle shading to give the user the ability to really focus on manufacturability within uh, choices of like tools and accessibility of their tool paths when projecting down onto the surface of parts. With our part here, we've got kind of a mold core going on where we have a couple of undercut features. Now our view tools are located in two separate spots, one over to the right hand side within the view toolbar. And you'll see here over the view flyout, we have our color shaded selection here already turned on. And if we select our standard shading here within power mill, you'll see that it kind of shades all of the parts and all the components in the model uh, as that generic blue. What we're gonna be looking at first is our minimum radius shading. Now what minimum radius shading does is it projects the minimum defined radius within the view settings and whether or not that radius can fit within certain areas of the part. So what I mean by that, if we go up to our view toolbar, we can access the same option for the shading under the appearance panel. And in the right hand corner of the appearance panel, if you click on this small flyout icon that's there, you'll see that we get into our drawing options within Power Mill. Now what this does is this is an area where the user can control specific things like the shading tolerances, that's where your wireframe and everything are gonna look a little more crisp to the model. Uh, but beneath that, you see we have our minimum radius shading options here. Now currently this is set to uh, 125. This will be defaulted once you use this. But if I were to set this at say maybe a half an inch, you'll see that a lot more red versus green shows up on the projection of the part. Now this tool works by basically projecting straight down within the active work plane and fitting the defined radius here in the minimum tool radius shading. Now, if we want to try a different radius or maybe figure out if a tool will fit within these radius, all we have to do is input that into the radius field and you'll see that the model shading color changes and updates appropriately. You'll see that a 16th radius or an eighth inch tool would definitely fit within this region perfectly. Now there are many different ways that we can set this from the tool selection as well. You don't just need to add this into here manually, but you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, the other thing we can do is access the right click functions in the edit expressions. And in the edit expressions, we could say the tool dot diameter and divided by two and that will input the tools radius and you'll see here that a quarter inch diameter or an eighth inch radius misses the majority of the smaller areas there now if we update our tool to a smaller tool we would then need to come in and edit that expression once again now if we want to specify the tool diameter utilizing our active tool we would actually need to add more to the command structure that, that defines this definition. Now we can do this by creating a macro function, utilizing that command or a button command that actually does this for us. Now if I come up to my demos tab, which is my custom ribbon interface, I can actually tick on this tooltip radius shade or tool radius shade tool radius, uh, a couple of different functions that I have here that pull up the command that we need. And this is just a simple button command uh, if I click on this, it will actually set this to the active tool. So I'm just going to switch my tool to an eighth inch, click on that button icon, and you'll see that that alters that to the eighth inch diameter tool, which can machine the majority of the radiuses in question. And that helps me with tool selection based off of tool radius and accessibility into those radius areas. Now, let me pull the command window up so that we can take a look at this. So I'm gonna to go to echo commands. And if we look at the buttons command, when I click on that, you'll see that that activates a couple of different commands within that string. Okay, what it's doing is basically what we did within the edit expression. It's activating the view model, which is part of what this is right here. It's activating the option of minimum tool radius shade. And here's the important part this dollar sign tool, which is basically giving it a variable of whatever tool is the active tool, and then dot diameter, and of course divided by two to get our radius, and that is what you'd want to put within the command within your customized button to be able to click on that button and apply it to the tool. To quickly just preview where that button is located and the command within the 
ribbon toolbar. I'll just go into the customized ribbon bar. And within the customization of the ribbon bar, you'll see in that demos tab that I have set up, we have a tools visual uh, panel that we have set up. And those are the three tools that I have. If I just click on that button that I showed, tool radius shade to tool radius, and I edit that, you'll see there is the command within a just custom command button just added to that panel. Now, along with our minimum radius shading option here in our views, we also have directly to the left of that, our draft angle shading. Now this helps us with the accessibility of features that our work plane and our toolpaths can project and reach. If you look at the color shading on this model currently, you'll see that there's a lot of red in certain areas, as well as maybe some yellow and some red areas under the, in the undercut region of our part. This helps to identify undercuts and areas that we cannot access via the current work plane. Now, if we come into our view options once again, and come into our appearance panel, into our model drawing options, you'll see that just above the minimum radius shading, we have some shade tool options here. Right underneath is our draft angle work area, and we then are able to alter this angle to see accessibility based off of certain degrees. Now, if I take this and maybe go minus one degree, you'll notice that more of the area at minus one degree is accessible to the cutter at this work plane. What that basically is saying is that looking straight down on this part, you'll see that the majority of our part is green. If we tilt that just a little bit, the red even in the sidewalls is now accessible based off of that parameter. Now, what's better to use this for is when we're going three plus two for maybe doing some five axis work and we wanna reach certain features, we can then create the work plane or even copy an existing work plane, activate it, reactivate our draft angle shading. And then what we can do is edit that work plane. And while we're in the work plane editor, if we go ahead and twist this about, you'll notice our draft angle shade while we are editing will update and now we have an accessible angle that we can define to see whether or not we're going to be able to reach features at specific angles and this can help you set up your three plus two or even going into your live five axis so that you can reach specific features on a part i'll go ahead and accept that and now that draft angle shade is continually updated to that work plane i hope you enjoyed this power mill highlights video Thank you for watching, and if you're looking for more Autodesk CAM content, feel free to check out our website or just give us a call at NextGenCAM. Thank you for watching.